Welcome back to the Rydell Law Firm Odyssey channel. Today I want to chat a little bit about uh, what is an ECCN. This is in regards to international trade and uh, we're going to talk about that. If you are an importer or an exporter and you need some help uh, understanding ECCN or classifying your goods or you need licenses for exporting your goods or making sure your imports will make it to the shelves, we're your team. Let's, uh, let's chat and make sure we can help you out and get your products in or out of the U.S. legally in the right way and make sure you have the right documents. Um, that's what we do every day. I'm a licensed customs broker as well, so we, uh, we deal with the ins and outs all the time. We love it. It's a lot of fun. There, there's just totally different new... new uh, there's all sorts of, of different products and stuff that we see every day that um, it's just it's a whole new ball game. Every new project is really interesting, so I like that. It's a challenge. Um, so anyway, so what is an ECCN? So this is an Export uh, Control Classification Number. Now what these are used for, if, if you're thinking about exporting, uh, this is probably something you've seen and it's, it's not something that is uh, well known outside of like the international trade community. So an ECCN is a number that is assigned to products uh, made in the United States or, or in the United States that are being exported for classifying that product into a scheme for you to understand what regulations apply and what type of licenses are applicable to that product to be exported. So for you to, to move it and sell it outside the United States, the ECCN is the key for understanding what applies, what rules apply, what regulations, and what licenses you're going to need. So it's an extremely important aspect of understanding export controls for your products. Um, it is, uh, it's something that it's, it's going to take some practice if you've never dealt with ECCNs before to learn the, the scheme of how to decipher what an ECCN is and how to classify your product. Um, so these are relevant for what are called dual use products. So a dual use product is something that has military applications and civilian applications. So this is uh, different than purely military applications. So purely military being things like a um, you know high explosives, high grade explosives, whatever C4 for mil for grenades or whatever, um, or machine guns uh, or tanks, right? Uh, artillery pieces. Those are purely military. There's no civilian um, use for an artillery piece or a tank, right? <laughs> uh, a mobile artillery. Uh, unit. A, a dual use, on the other hand, is something that it, it's even if it doesn't seem like at first glance a that it has a military application. The U.S. has deemed that it could be used in certain military applications. Therefore, it is controlled in our exports. So we we got to watch it and make sure it doesn't go to the bad guys, right? Um, and these are this is a broad broad category. These are things like even um, surprisingly HVAC systems. So high quality air conditioning and air filtration systems, those are controlled. Those are dual use. Um, a few years ago, there was a famous, uh, or I say famous, it was, in, uh, I guess, infamous or something case. Um, an HVAC company, I think it was Massachusetts or Maryland or something in the Northeast Corridor, was selling HVAC systems to some laboratories in China and got dinged and caught and fined, a massive fine. I, I think they ended up having to close down. But they were selling systems to laboratories in China that were basically producing uh, weapon systems, right? And for certain types of weapon systems and space programs, you have to have clean rooms and you have to have super high quality HVAC. So that's why HVAC systems are controlled. We don't want that technology or that um, availability to be to, to to be given to the bad guys, right? Or perceived bad guys, so that they can't make weapons of war and make certain things that are are not acceptable. Um, to the international community. So HVAC systems, this is going to be things like encryption. So if you have a, if you developed an encryption application, uh, an encryption software, that encryption, that software could certainly be uh, dual use and controlled. Encryption gets a little weird, but uh, anyways, we'll talk about that another time. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other things that are surprising, but um, oh, like aperture motors, certain types of motors and sensors. So if you're like a, a model rocket enthusiast, for example, there are going to be certain types of motors that will control your flight, your, your flight control, uh, basically is what it is, a flight control motor that will direct the missile, right, uh, the, the rocket, the hobbyist rocket to where, it want, where you want it to go and, and bring it back safely. The flight control computer, those are controlled, believe it or not, even for hobbyists, 
those are um, controlled and, and you have to have a license or certain types of, of regulations that you meet before you're allowed to export it. So that's an example of dual use and, and why they're applicable. So if you have a product that potentially has military applications, it's extremely important that you understand what the ECCN number is, whether it is regulated or not, and that you have in place a certain export control scheme and uh, kind of compliance program in place for you to make sure your products are not going to the bad guys, right, and going overseas. And it's, it's not something, obviously, you're never going to sell to, uh, right, someone named bin Laden or something, right, in Saudi Arabia or, or Afghanistan. But the thing is, if you sell to somebody in the Emirates or Singapore, um, you know, or wherever, or, or Turkey, and that product gets transshipped, or, or shipped again, sent to another party, and then it gets sent to a bin Laden somewhere or a bad actor, you will be liable. So that's why it's important. That's why you need to have certain controls in place. So ECCN, th that's what it, it, what it is and what it does. Just a little bit more about it. I'll tell you that it, it, it starts, the kind of the scheme um, starts off with 10 broad categories. And these are categories like aerospace, information technology, um, nuclear uh, products, uh, trying to think of what else, um, aviation, I, I, maybe that's with aerospace. So anyways, there's 10 broad categories of, of where the product fits, uh, where it's used, basically. And then within that, after you know what category it's in, then there is a, um, a product group, is what it's called. And the product groups drill down into things like the end use and where where it would be used in a system, if it's a component or, or you know, a critical um, part of something. So it, you go down the list, you basically find your product category, or your, your category, excuse me, then you find your product um, group, and you go through and read and classify your, your product. So I've done these, it's very interesting because some of our clients have uh, dual use products that get super, super specific, where it's like a part for a product that's controlled. So if you make a certain type of widget or even maybe a certain set of screws for a dual use product or a, a, a fastener set for a dual use product, that widget, that screw, that fastener set will also be controlled typically as a part of that controlled product. So it's, I don't wanna get too technical, and maybe I already have, but it's really, um, it's it's really fascinating. I mean, in going through all of this, this is what we do every day, and trying to dig into what products are, how they're classified, and then once you know how it's classified, then then you go to the commerce control list part, uh, what seven seventy four, uh, uh, or supplement B to part seven seventy four, and figure out what the rules are for that product for that ECCN. Um, there may be some countries that are blocked that you can't send it to. Or if it has a certain use, that ECCN, if it has a certain use, it could be allowed to be exported to some countries and not others, or you need a license for a certain use and not other uses. So it is, um, it is a really kind of a complex web of, of things you gotta know and figure out. And that's why we exist, right? That's why <laughs> trade attorneys like we have here at Rydell Law Firm, that's why we exist and we do what we do. It's, uh, it's something that I'll tell you is, is, is a lot of fun for me. I like figuring out these kind of things and. and digging deep into the product. So if we can help you out in knowing what your product is, knowing about export controls and export compliance matters with your business um, and your product, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear what you're doing and, and what your product is and how we can be a fit and uh, help you do things the right way and make sure your product gets to the good guys. So reach out anytime and we'll talk to you next time.